Um, so I'm going to get started, and this will be, like, the, the main idea behind this is recording this so that other people can take a look later on and see what was he doing, what was he thinking as he went through this. So my first goal is there's a couple different control groups, Rocket, Arrow, Comet, Dart, Meteor, and the front builder's plate on or off. So, yeah, so I think the first thing I want to do is make it so that this Hello World says Rocket, and when you click it, it both changes color and it toggles the control group on and off. So, hopefully pretty straightforward for the modelers who know about control groups. So if we take a look at the object model, um, and we look for Rocket, here we go, Widget 1, label Rocket, with what it's supposed to do. Uh, control group, control rocket. group rocket. Yep. <laughs> oh, the fact that it has a TL is a little interesting, but anyways, that doesn't doesn't matter for this. It was reminded me of another bug. So, what we're looking to do is modify this rocket control group. So, if we take a look at our rocket.camel, this is what we have so far. This is pretty boilerplate, copied and pasted, and from some of these other places. I mean, not copied and pasted, but like importing and taking ideas from. So the first thing we do is we import the full default user interface. So this pulls in the standard Steam Camel user interface, and then we can add stuff onto it. Excuse me. Um, so we start off with element, and this defines where we're going to put it. And it also gives us a space to kind of put our opacity settings. This is, if you don't care about the settings up at the top here, like the scale and the opacity, like... You don't have to do any of that, but that's just because I'm integrating it with the existing setup. Um, that's what I'm doing. So, so we say what corner of the screen it should live in. So middle bottom. Uh, we import the existing. Er, so we import this little snippet that adds in opacity. Um, I'm not going to go into that at just this moment because it's not as important for what we're doing tonight. But it means that's it, fairly it, it, it means the opacity applies. Yeah, so this applies the opacity, and then this applies the scale. And so once we have this block done, we know where we are, we know our, our opacity and our scale. And then from here, we can actually start doing stuff. So we say y, So for this element, we say y negative 36. So we go up 36 pixels. We say we want this element to have text in it. We want the value to be hello world, and we want the text height to be 8 pixels. So instead, we'll set this to rocket. And now we can start doing some coloring. So we're going to create a color block. And I'm going to take a look at one of the other GUIs as an example, because there's a lot that has not been documented and mostly done through examples. This is like an, some initial documentation, this video. Um, but this will need a full write-up at some point. So if I go down to the existing user interfaces, we take a look at Steam version 0. Um, here's what an ex example color block is. So this is temperature. So as the temperature readout changes, it switches between these different colors. So we're going to do something a little bit simpler here, but in the same idea. So rocket.camel, so 0 equals something, 1 equals something. And we can just do green and red. I just want to make sure I remember. Because that's, I think that's opacity and then that's the yes yeah, so we'll do so opacity is 0x ff so if, if anyone's familiar with html colors or an html color picker this is what you would use um, so at value 0 it's going to be red and at 1 it's going to be green and so oh and then we also need to tell it what control it's part of um, so control is coming from the model rocket. So what this is saying, at, actually I'm going to move this down here. Well, the actual order of these doesn't matter, it's just personal preference. So for this particular element that's nested within all of these different settings, move up 36 pixels, add this text at this size, and with this control value, change the color. So you could also change the location, you could change the scale, the rotation, all sorts of fun stuff through that. Um, but for now, that this is what we've got. So, if I didn't make any mistakes, I should be able to go to Options, Resource Packs, Enable Disable, which just tricks Minecraft into reloading everything. 
You could also restart the game or remove and re-add your pack, depending on how you do it. Um, I'm just going to be listening, by the way. I'm going to be muted for most of this. Okay. Okay. Check the log, make sure it didn't crash. Nope, it didn't. And there we go, so now it says rocket down here in red. And when we... Oh, and what I forgot to do is I forgot to add toggle. So if it's a clickable element and not a draggable element or something like that, you have to tell it that you can actually click on it. Um, what I can do is change the control group, and you can see the color changes, which is pretty cool. But we actually want to be able to click this. So the way we do that is all we have to do is set toggle true. And the quotes don't actually matter there, it's just preference. So if we want to make that toggleable, Options, resource packs. There's going to be a lot of reloading resource packs today. Hello. Hey, Dragon. So, Dragon is also Kai. Uh, so, they're the ones who created this model. I'm currently Cam recording this to... Oops, sorry. I, 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 I was going to give you a suggestion what you're up to. Ah, so. sure. Actually, yeah, yeah, if you want to summarize. Yeah. He, Cam is basically adding a nameplate toggle to the GUI on Rocket. Yes, he had informed me of uh, what was going on. <laughs> yep. All right, make sure I got you turned up there. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, so fairly straightforward. So you can now click on this, and it inverts. Um, the interest, one of the inter interesting things we're going to handle have to handle is Rocket is actually inverted from the other controls, just so it's the default, uh, the way that Kai has it set up. Because this was probably made before control groups could have default values. Um, so we'll have to work around that a little bit, but just to bring you up to speed, we have, we import the existing user interface, the existing Steam user interface, then we pull in some boilerplate code while also specifying the screen location. So all of this is kind of boil boilerplate, and every everything underneath here is what we're actually working on today. If you're not using the existing opacity and scale stuff in your user interface, you can ignore everything in here except for screen X and screen Y. Um, so we say move up 36 pixels, this is our text, and this is uh, what, con what control group it is, set it to be clickable, and here's the two different colors. And I, you can, yeah, so you can change these colors to be much better colors or come up with better user interfaces. I'm a developer, and I create particularly bad user experiences. This is known. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I give you guys amazing tool sets to build with, because I know you'll do better than I can do myself. Um, so the next thing we need to do is start moving stuff around and uh, adding in some of these other options. It's so like Meteor, Comet, Dart, all that other fun stuff. So the first thing we can do is just copy-paste this. That's the easiest thing. Um, but I'm, I'm going to refactor it just a little bit, so we're going to do move all this to a sub-element, that way it's all at the same Y level. So all of these are, so everything under here is going to be at Y36. And so now we can just take this and paste it for another one. And then we can say, we can move it in the X direction, let's say 40 pixels, maybe? Let's, let's see how that looks. That's probably too much, but yeah, we'll see. Um, resource packs, add remove, done. And this will reload. I'll pull up the log. Okay. And I forgot to change it. So they both say rocket now, but that's a good position. So the first one is rocket, next one is arrow. And I assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Kai, but um, that's you just have it lower case. Arrow. I'm gonna and check that one. I mean, I can check here. I've got the OBJ model. Yep. Oh, I've Control group got Blender. Arrow. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, now we should be able to options, right. resource packs, this, this. Unfortunately, there's no way of saying just reload this particular user interface. It's currently set up to reload everything. Um, which is a little bit of a pain. Um, Didn't F3T do the it's same thing? Bad. Right, I need uh, to acquire the Minecraft font. <laughs> possibly. 
Okay. So now if we click arrow, arrow turns on. The only weird part is rocket is sort of inverted from all the other ones because rocket was set up as the default. So if we look at the control group here in the object file, uh, so arrow is just a standard toggle CG. If we look at, go back to rocket, um, oh, that doesn't have an invert. How did you do that? Did uh, you do it the with a default? Button. Wait, was it oh, the button? The... Oh, no, no, it's the... So if we do CG... Label hide. Yeah, so the rest of these are inverted. So that the height is inverted on the rest of them, like arrow, but rocket is just set with a normal uh, setup. So all we really need to do, if memory serves, and I do have the code open just so I can double check because I spend time doing a lot of other things. I'm pretty sure it's invert here. Yep, invert. So rocket we can, assuming the colors are currently correct. Yep, so arrow set up correctly. So it's green when it's showing, red when it's not. Rocket we need to invert. Well, it's true, and that should fix that. And resource. Actually, I can try. I can try F3T. Yes, that does it. That freezes Minecraft and locks my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. There we go. So now they're both red. Click on one. Click on the other click on both, they both show up. <laughs> right, at some point, I'll probably add a logic system to control groups. Today is not that day. <laughs> but, yeah, so now these work. And you could do um, images that have colors or multiple images. We can also do an example later on uh, that's a little bit more complex than just changing the color. But what I want to do first is we have two options here. One is we can copy and paste this block five or six times for each individual option, and that might be fine, but then anytime you have to adjust the color or any of the other properties, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So what we're going to do is use the import system to fix that. Um, so we're going to create a block that represents all of this information, and then just be able to change a few things every time it's copied and pasted into this file by the uh, automatically. So if we go to this GUI KFB rocket. So I'd also recommend people put their user interfaces in a, some sort of folder with their name in it or the pack name just so they don't conflict between different modelers. Um, so we can create a new file here and call this nameplate.camel and I can copy this particular piece right here, paste it, and just going to remove some indentation. Just f You don't have to, but it's easier simplicity-wise. Uh, so, we don't want them all to say rocket, so we're going to want to put in a replacement here. So value is going to be label. This is going to be control. Or actually, we'll just call that CG. And this is... Oh, no, that does stay toggle. Inverted. And the colors can stay the same. So these are the things we're going to want to specify for each. So label, CG, and inverted. So now we can come back to rocket, and inside of this element, instead we can do import. I'm going to copy and paste from here, the just because... Yeah, all of this stuff, because typing that all out is going to be a pain. This will be... So the next question you might be asking is, well, if we're not doing all of this stuff in here, we're going to get rid of that, how do we put that into this file as, we, as it gets imported? That's when you do source equals this, and now you can do replace... And then everything, every block inside here is like a key to, is like a find to replace pair. So if we do label equals rocket, CG equals rocket. 
invert true. And that now replaces that entire block. And now what we can do is take the same thing and do that here. And get rid of this. So this is going to be... Actually, I'm going to get rid of the invert here, because I don't need that. That'll make it simpler. Put that in here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now we can get rid of all of this. So do you kind of see how that works, where I'm taking something that's done a bunch of times and putting all the common properties somewhere else? So what it does is it reads this file, does all of the replacements it, that you specify, so label gets replaced with rocket, CG gets replaced with rocket, and then just pastes it in in the space of this import block. Does that make sense, or is that still confusing? Makes sense enough to me. Okay. Cool. So, the f before I start adding more on, um, I'm just going to reload and make sure this works. Make sure I got the names correctly. Nameplate.camel, nameplate.camel. Okay. Uh, well, I'll do the F3T. Nope. Oh, waiting, waiting, waiting. <laughs> So, this will be a fairly long stream. I may end up cutting this down, or not. Not sure. Um, but there we go. So, nothing changed, but that's exactly what we want. It still works the same way, but it's much simpler. So now, it, let's say we wanted to change uh, it from red to gray. We could change this to, like, 444444, and then reload that. And I'm going to do it this way. So, but, um, so it doesn't lock my mouse. And now, instead of having to copy and paste that for every single element here, it just automatically d automatically works. So, we're going to paste it here. Nope, nope, that didn't work. So now we copy and paste these pieces, which are a lot easier. So this is going to be 80, and we'll just do one more of these for this particular example. Um, Comet. Comet. <laughs> Two M's or one? One M. Yep. Alright. And I didn't actually re reload that. Awesome. Let me double check. Did I screw anything up? Hopefully not. Actually, I'll set this to... N I'll set this one to uh, X equals negative 40. X zero and X 40. F3T, and wait. It's exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's pretty cool. So all those other ones are grayed out until they're turned on. So rocket, comet, and arrow. And you can imagine like how this could be extended further. <laughs> So you could do like a list along the side. Um, there's a lot more that you can do here, and we'll get into some of that. So I'm kind of stalling thinking about what exactly I want to show next, and I think I know. I think what I want to do is modify this so that it, instead of changing the color, it also changes the text when you when you turn one of these on or off. Um, question is, do I want to change the text, or do I, do I want to add like an icon as well? Which would you, get, would you guys rather see? Changing the text or adding an icon? Um, icon? Yeah. Okay. I think adding an icon would be slightly more... Yeah. Slightly more... common? Okay. Let's see... So let's do this... Set that to zero. I don't have any assets prepared, in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's just, because that's eight pixels, set, oh no, that's millimeters. Set that to pixels. Eight, eight. 
And so we'll do... I don't know. How do I want to do this? Maybe instead we'll do two different circles. Zero, zero, sixteen, sixteen. Okay, so that's a circle. Hopefully that's not a surprise to anyone. <laughs> and Is it? I thought it was a triangle. Oh. Uh, technically it's a triangle, but it is a circle. Um, so there's different fills um, we can use. Not even going to ask. Let's see. Fill in stroke. Here we go. Stroke paint, stroke style. Set that to that point pixel. And so let's set the color on this to be, I don't know, gray. And set the stroke paint to be black. So we'll set that to be 16, 16. This will be 0, 0. Okay, so we'll, we'll say this is the unselected version. Er, export. I actually want to export the selection. We'll set this unselected.png. And how do I want to mark this as selected? I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe I can just do like a star or something. Yeah, let's do a star, because that's going to look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we'll do 16 and 16 pixels. Or close to it. Close enough. 16 by 16, no offset, and we'll set this as selected.png. Alright, so now I'm going to have to copy those files in. Um, what's the easiest way to do that? Um, I'm just going to do that here. Don't mind me with my own selection boxes. <laughs> okay. They are very efficient. SW pack. Trevor and GUI. Kai FB. I'm just going to do unselected. Hopefully that should work. So, yep, there's our two images. Here and here. Great programmer art. Perfect <laughs> programmer art. <laughs> so, the cool part is, now we, like, we could start from scratch, but I don't think we have to. I think we can just modify this existing nameplate to support that. So we can come into nameplate.camel, and now we're actually going to... Oh, this gets a little funny with inverted. Does so, it? Uh, yes, it does. You got to define, I got to guess you define image at zero and image at one. Uh, not exactly. So the, the first thing I need, actually, I need, need to fix something. So I, I pulled invert out here because I could, but I can't do that anymore. So I need to do it here instead. Well, false or true here. Invert false. So if we come back here, just doing a quick little fix beforehand. Invert equals. Okay. So now, now we can get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this into... To, uh, so we can either create two different elements or we can... Let's just add some elements down here for it. Um, yeah. We're going to copy this stuff, so... And we'll keep toggle as well. And actually, we can turn off toggle here. So now if you click on the, the name, it won't do anything. But we can set it so it uh, only does it for the image here. Um, so this is going to be railroading. Bah. This is why I copy-paste. Because 
sometimes, especially in a demo, I can't type. It's also been a very long weekend. Yep. Making sure it's actually imaged up. Weekend full of um, many surprises. Okay, so this is control, invert, toggle. This is the image for this one, and we also want to say... I used to call it hide, and hide still works, but I prefer translucent. Translucent equals true. And that it should work for unselected. In theory, there should oh, be hide and translucent is interactable versus non-interactable. I can't actually do that invert. So ro the rocket one is going just going to be inverted because of a limitation in how this is set up. Um, so this is where you would use a control group default instead of inverting it in the model. Every so you I would have all the, so because rocket is different than the rest. This is trickier than I would like, and I don't think there's a good way around it. Um, at least in the current iteration of this stuff. So, so I wasn't aware that you can do control group defaults. <laughs> it's a very new thing, so there's no fault on you for having that be a different thing now. Um, technically, I could edit the object file <laughs> and fix that. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted, um, but we'll do that later. That's a, that's a good example for afterwards so I can actually fix it. Let's just get the basics working now and then get to there. So Rocket will just say that that will just be inverted in a weird way until we fix that issue. Um, that can work. So the color still changes here. That's fine. Um, okay. Apologies, one moment. Okay. All set. Ah, so translucent true. Sorry. It's a late on a Sunday, so I'm a little more tired than I'd like to be normally, but I need to go over this stuff, because this is important. So, image equals that, translucent true. This one is going to be invert true, and this one's going to be invert false, I think. Or it might be inverted, I don't... It might be the other way around. So we have two different images, both in the same location. And actually, we do need to move these a little bit, so we're going to do x x equals negative 8, maybe? Try that, x equals... Oh no, this is... Well, the problem... So, part of the problem is text renders from the center, because that's how Minecraft does it, so that does make this a little tricky for this sort of layout. So we'll just do... Uh, this is going to be negative 20. We'll just try that. x is negative 20. Um, Image translucent, negative 20 image translucent. That should work. Let's see if this crashes the game. <laughs> Options, resource packs, add, remove, and watch this. My guess is the images I'm putting in are not going to be well aligned, but that should be okay. Okay. Hey, look at that. So, it kind of works, so you can click on the image and it does stuff. And these images are twice as big as they're supposed to be. Um, which is fun. So I'm, I'm going to fix that <laughs> first. Set those to 8 pixels. I wasn't sure if it was going to be 8 or 16, but now we know. 8 pixels. Bye. 8 pixels ish and re export these. Place copy. So, what I'm doing here is this is like dragging and dropping the file. I'm just, I don't want to use my file browser because it's, it's faster for me. <laughs> um, okay. So that's also, what's, what's something else we want to tweak before we reload? We need to move that a little bit further. So let's move that another 8 pixels, just because I feel like that's a good number. And let's reload. And... 
Cross your fingers. Oh, I also needed to move it vertically, but I can do that in a minute. Hey, or actually, no, I don't need to move vertically. And I moved it too far, but we're getting there. So maybe only four, so maybe you only have to move, move back four pixels. <laughs> yep. So we'll set that to four, and then we'll come back in here to Rock Duck Camel. And we're going to change the X offset to... Just give it another four pixels everywhere, just so there's a little bit more room. Oh dear, I have to sneeze. Or maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Loaded, and that's... Okay, I can live with that. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. <laughs> so, one thing probably in the user interface 2.0 will be... Um, that actually, for programmer art, it looks better than I could have anticipated. <laughs> Um, it would be to have justification on the uh, on the text to be able to specify center, left, right, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, for the quick demo, I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm gonna do that real quick just so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay. But I mean, that's pretty cool. Okay, so. There's other GUI stuff I want to go over, but I do want to show the control group defaults, because that's a pretty cool feature. Because Rocket inverts in a weird way, and that's bothering me. Because <laughs> Rocket has to be on for that to work. So, let's fix the model real quick. But before I go on, is there anything that I've shown so far that you want to ask questions on? Does, is anything in here not make sense, or is a little bit confusing? Can you link GUI elements to liveries? Say, for example, you can have certain liveries only show up with certain buttons. Show only have certain buttons show up. Theoretically. This is an untested feature that we're going to try out right now. <laughs> Texture variant, yes. Okay, so yeah, let's do that. So we'll have this only show if the texture variant is the uh, default. Or maybe we'll set it to the other one. Maybe set it to wood varnish. Let's see if this works. <laughs> if this works, in Rock theory I could make completely customizable and number names and numbers and only have like three liveries. Yep. That would that would make me very happy because that would mean that you're hitting the model cache much less hard. I mean it would make the A4 would only require I think four liveries. And instead that of thirty five. One, two, three, four, five, six liveries. No, There's seven. Three. Okay. There's, seven berries, so, right? oh. <laughs> there's two garter blues. Then we all move it. Yeah, I can't go. <laughs> is that how I did it? Is that a string? I don't know that any people really know that this is a thing. Yes, that's just a string. Um, texture variant, varnish wood. And invert true. I mean, I didn't learn about I the import feature be... until a random conversation. <laughs> I mean, this has all been kind of developed. At, so I've been dogfooding this, like building this user interface. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it has dramatically, Im dramatically improved what you can actually do with these u user interfaces. So let's see if this breaks and crashes my game. <laughs> See if I come down here, can watch that for errors. Okay. So far so good. Um didn't actually disable it, so let's grab the paintbrush and paint it. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, default, apply to stock. Hmm. Translucent. 
trans... Yeah, it's translucent. Right? Yeah. So why isn't that working? Texture variant. Let's debug this code real quick. Um, texture variant is not equal now. Breakpoint here. Okay. Is this going to be the human readable name? It might be the human readable name. Wood varnish. It helps if I can spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Varnish wood. Yep. This is why I copy paste things, especially during demos. Oh, varnish wood. Is that it? Wait, what? Wood varnish. Okay. Copy. Oh, for a second there, I swapped around how I had spelt it. <laughs> Alright, which means we can <laughs> get rid of the invert. I think we don't need the invert there. Equals it, and then it's one or zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think that's correct. We'll see. Options, resource packs. Watch this. So, there's three Gartrip Blue liveries. <laughs> Balances, no balances, and we have Canada. Okay, so let's paint this default. Apply to stock, and our GUI disappears. Look at that. That's what it was supposed to do. And the code worked, hey. it was just the, the GUI was broken. Because <laughs> I can't spell. Cool. So that's a pretty neat thing. Okay, so the last thing I want to do... And I have to click on this now. I the A4 ten, has 10 different liveries. <laughs> so the next thing we want to do is control group defaults, because that bothers me. And this is something I haven't really talked about other than posting, hey, this is a thing um, in the modeler, or in, in, in the release notes. Um, some people have played with it a little bit, but it's still pretty a pretty new feature. So the first thing, the first thing we're going to do is edit the object model. Um... CG rocket. Okay, so the model's been updated, and now we need to add control group defaults. And I'm going to take a look at the... scroll over to here and take a look at the release notes, because I don't remember the actual layout of this. Um, announcements... Okay, controls, name, default, copied, paste. So, this control group is going to be rocket, and that's going to default to 1. So rocket is going to default to be turned on for control groups. So theoretically, if I didn't break the object file, <laughs> and I will need to break and replace this uh, piece of stock, this should work. Actually, I'm going to, because I replaced the object file, I'm going to preemptively do that. Source packs, add, remove, done, and see what explodes. All right, nothing exploded. Let's see what happens when I place it. Rocket is turned on. That's still inverted. Um, hmm. Okay, I, th I think I've got all the, all the air for the freeze. Hide invert CG rocket. Oh, did I put that in the wrong spot? There are two widgets under the same number that have the hide invert. <laughs> Well, actually, they're the same ah. number. Okay. Label rocket. So this one's label rocket. This is hide invert. Oh, hide invert. Make sure that file is saved. Done. And cross our fingers. Yeah. 
And for those of you on 116 or newer, hot reloading like this doesn't always work. And sometimes it just doesn't plain work at all. <laughs> Hide, invert, CG. Hide, invert, CG arrow. So... Oh, you know, probably because... I wonder if that stayed cached. So funnily enough... So, okay, so the good news is you can see when I placed it, Rocket is now turned on by default. The model is not updated. But let me just save and restart my game, and I think that should do it. How is that working? That should not work. <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Okay. And we should be there in just a sec. The caching is actually slower on my dev environment due to a few... few reasons. On actual modeling machines, that should be much faster. And so once we do this, I'm going to go through an example of creating a little bit more of an advanced user interface with multiple levels. Just as an example, it's going to be programmer art. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But it's going to be pretty cool. Um, single player, patron world. And hopefully editing the object file worked. <laughs> hey, it worked. There's Rocket. It's a little hard to see. Let me make that bigger. There we go. So, yeah, as soon as the model is placed down, or the, as soon as the stock is placed down, all of those control group defaults are applied. So if we place that, I don't want to clear, I'm just going to move some of these. Rocket is enabled. So, pretty sweet. Alright, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting your labels here, but for the for this demo it's a it's not a terrible spot. Um, you could stuff them behind chat. <laughs> you could. That would be an even worse spot. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a reason that like, the GUI doesn't go here anymore, but that's um, because chat tends to over overlap it. One thing I do want to add is uh, a Z feature, so you can say this should be of a certain GUI priority, like, layered-wise. So, like, this mm -hmm. could you could potentially have stuff that overlays chat. Can we put it on the left if we want to? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can put stuff in any of the corners or any of the middle areas of the screen. You could even put something dead center in the screen. Like, if you click a special area of the button, like, someone's yeah, face for pops some up. of my models, know. the left makes more sense. Yeah. Sorry, I just thought the idea of just the, of the, of the, of the you know, long way just this fuck you, no chat. <laughs> it just has the block in front of the chat. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's where they go on my models. Go on the left. Right would look weird. Yeah, that's just called when somebody on the on the server decides to teleport all the items to them, and chat's just filled with a grey ball of text, and you can't see anything. No need. Yep. Is there a better alternative? Go slightly the, higher. It's but... Minecraft. <laughs> all right. So here is the oh. austerity. This is. Well, um, couldn't you just put the couldn't the, the chat bucket. just go above the overlay instead? Then you'd see the chat. I mean, you could do that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, the bucket, so the what more, more complicated one. <laughs> yes. So this is one of Nathan's models. And he did a pretty good job with a lot of this stuff. So I'm curious if the reverser... No, because you, you can't do it when, when it's clicked. Like, if that could be... If that could move while it's doing that? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just... 
of thinking out loud. You would have to do an animation. You'd have to use animation to get that to basically when you hold when you're moving the reverser that the the thing is held in. Yeah, I think that'd be the only really practical way to do it. Would you be able to make it release itself afterwards though? Not, so I, I don't think there's currently a way of doing that. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. I'm getting very <laughs> distracted because this is a fun model to play with. Okay, stopping. <laughs> <laughs> so, this model has a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm going to... If I haven't already, I'm going to download the blend file for it. Um, and then, wow. A lot is an understatement. <laughs> yes, there is a lot going on. I, and we're not going to do the whole thing tonight. Nathan nearly removed half of what I gave him. That's the scary All part. Right. It, it, the bucket yeah. is only half of all of its features. Downloads. I am slightly amused by the fact that the A4, if you, if you ignore names, only ha has ten liveries, and one of them is just Dominion of Canada. Which would have a livery in this widget, in this, because the names would have to be under widgets. Uh, Dominion which Canada means... has, a, has the bell, though. Yes, which I could very easily make a widget on Dominion Canada's name. Damn. <laughs> Extract this. But yeah, but Sorry, I did not have this blood file prepped. Actually, you could probably then do balance and no balances also, also as widgets. Cat, no. I can't see the screen. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah you, they change on how they do things. So you'd have to make them separate liveries. The, the 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 idea of a no va of no valances jubilee silver seems like a bad idea. I can't remember the proper livery for it, so it's called jubilee silver. Silver. <laughs> <laughs> I was overthinking it. In that case, I'll just sort of remove that. Also, remove jubilee. Also, remove Jimmy and Canada from from that list. Boop. Let's see. That's still nine liveries. <laughs> Which is better than 35. <laughs> True. <laughs> Sorry, the cat is sitting in front of my taskbar and I can't see what I'm clicking on. <laughs> Worst case scenario, oh, everyone decides. okay, so he named it... Why did he name it This is a Bucket? Dot <laughs> <blend>? <laughs> 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 This well, is already then. There's that more. You don't know. The fact that Cam doesn't get that reference is what is even funnier. Oh my god. Um, that's a reference to TF2, Cam. Oh! I played that a couple times. Yeah. So, Boop. Alright. Back in the day. So, the textures are not didn't come through properly, but it is what it is. Okay, so here's Alice. And here's all the other widgets that he has on here. So, let's see. So Nathan has widget customization. So he has a ton of different categories. So different air tanks, air pumps, injectors, setups and grabs, or steps and grabs, lubricators. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Just trying to think about where we want to start. So, probably where we want to start is creating a just starting to drop in a custom user interface for this. So, I'm going to close out of that, and that, and that, because I don't need that open, or this, or this. And I think I'm just going to do the simple text version for now, but you can, given this, you can see, oh, you can put in images instead of just doing simple text replacement like that. So, we're going to go to the Hunslet test pack, assets, so railroading, new directory, GUI, bucket. New file, bucket.camel, and to start, I'm just going to duplicate this and then cut a bunch of stuff out. So we don't want any of this. Sorry, one moment. Okay, 
that's taken care of. <sighs> so, let's get rid of all this stuff, because we don't need this. And instead of middle bottom, we're going to put this at... Uh, left. Left or right? Left. Left middle. And so we're going to just simply have the text saying customize. So we're going to do x equals... We want to move positive... Oh, it's raining and I haven't disabled that in this world. Um, let's just move over... 15? Yeah, 15 pixels. 16. I like round numbers. 16. That's 16 is very is a very round number. Text value equals customize height equals eight pixels. Okay, so that should be everything we need to start off with. And now we need to go into rolling stock locomotives. This copy the GUI block or the, the overlay piece here. Uh, you can technically you can put it anywhere. I'll just put it here instead of rock. This is going to be GUI bucket bucket to camel. <laughs> so yeah, so let's just do that basic. Make sure cut the text customized shows up in the GUI. Resource packs and see what I broke. I expect the answer will be the word customized isn't far enough over. <laughs> Probably, but you never know. This is where the justificates the text justification would be very handy. I may add that should I add that right now? How hard would it be? <laughs> Non-trivial. Like, it, not actually that hard, but I'd probably break a couple things in the process, and I don't need to do that. Hey, customize! Okay. So, we're going to move it up to be over here, so we'll move that up. I, I, I'm at, let me measure how many pixels, because I've got the element down here. Steam. Where's the water gauge? Water glass. Nope. There we go. So that is, uh, let's see, width and height. So we'll just move it up 50 pixels, and that should be good. Uh, so, so Y minus 50. Yep, exactly. And we'll move it over, let's just say to 24. 24 is also a nice number. Um, I like having X specified first. It doesn't actually matter, but it makes me feel better. All right, so let's reload that, make sure that works. And then we can really get to work. Okay, almost there. <laughs> Let's move that up just to 60 pixels, because we've got room. And we're going to move it over another... 32. <laughs> 28. 32 would be a nicer number, but I think we can get away with 28. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can live with that. <clears throat> dum, 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 dum. Reloading Minecraft. There we go. Perfect. So now we, when we click on this, we want to open up a submenu. So that is what's going to be here. And do I want to do a... Yeah. Okay, so this is also going to be... Toggle true. So here's a question. Do we want this to be a... I think we want this to be a setting. So there's control groups and settings. Settings and GUIs are stuff that is applied globally and not actually tied to the piece of stock. 
like control groups are. Yeah, I think I'm going to do setting. So toggle true setting equals customize menu to bucket customize menu. So if you have several buckets, you, they will all customize. <laughs> yes. Like, again, like you want to choose fairly unique names for a lot of this stuff <clears throat> as you're going through. Excuse me, I'm going to have a quick... Unless you're doing some, like, open, like, left doors, right doors. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to want to start putting text here, and we want that to be shown or hidden depending on if we click that or not. Um... So I'm also going to add a color block here, just so we can visually debug this. I'm just going to copy and paste this one, because I like it. Alright. Uh, so this element is going to be... Uh, translu transparent? Translucent. I always forget which one it is. Translucent. True. Not control group, setting... Copy paste it because that's easier, and I'm not going to screw up that part. Okay. Setting is bucket customize menu. That should work. I might need to invert that. I don't actually remember. And so now we can start <coughs> creating text elements. I'm going to go a little bit fast and just copy paste a lot of stuff to start. This is going to be okay. So going to the blend file, let's do air tanks. Just do it in the order it's on there. Air tank menu. Bucket air tank menu. And this is going to be air tanks. So the only problem is we haven't. Get, get, we haven't given this a position, so I think we want to go up 50 and then over a bunch, even more. So we're going to go, yeah, x equals 40, maybe? y equals negative 50. Transition true. So this element is going to be controlled by when either bucket customize menu is turned on or off, and we'll be setting it trans to translucent or not. This is going to be, and this also needs toggle. So this will be a toggleable piece of text, which will change color, that will depend on the air brake, or the, the air tank menu. Okay, let's see, make sure I didn't screw anything up. Hopefully not, let's try it. Okay. Hey, look at that. That actually works. We just need to move that over by another... I don't know. 10 pixels? Yeah, I think 10 pixels would be good. And then we can really start having some fun with this. So we're going to do it the like just by copying and pasting for the first few, and then we're going to go back through and rewrite it so it's much simpler. Okay, customize the tanks. On, off. Cool. And so you could probably imagine at this level, like in this element, you could add a background image. So you could do like image equals something dot PNG, for example. And then you could have like an actual like background to the menu. Um, So we have air tanks, and so let's copy and paste this and do another one. Air tank menu and a blend file. Next one is air pump menu. These are going to be fun to look at. I should do something more recognizable, but whatever. Pump menu. And so this one, we're just going to move this one down. Y equals 
Move that down 10. And that should work. Okay, so all of those work now. So unfortunately, I don't have any sort of like exclusion logic right now. So if you click on two of these at the same time, it will eventually show both menus. I'm just going to just move those over another four pixels, two pixels, two pixels. But I'm not going to reload yet. So next, we want to actually have a menu that's over here. So we want it at the same Y level, but we want it to be even further in the X direction. So we'll set like X to 100. So let me move that down. We'll leave some room there. I'm not going to put a comment here saying sub menus. This, these are actually going to be menus. It's going to be sub menus. Who just joined? Nathan. Nathan. Oh, Nathan, perfect timing. So He's menu he, he's menuing your bucket. Yes. Or I'm bucketing the menu. Depends on how you look at it. Okay, so this we're going to set an offset of... Uh, I have weird key bindings in this editor. Um, y equals negative 50. X equals 100. And now we actually want to build a menu that works on control groups. That's going to be inside of here. This will be air tank menu, air pump. Yeah, there we go. And inside of here, these are going to be based on these settings. So I'm going to do translucent true. And setting equals air tank menu. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Copy. Tank. Well, I'll copy and paste that in a sec. Air tank menu. And now we can actually create the in individual, individual elements. Um, so what are the different air tanks? Let's take a look over here. <laughs> air, air one, one air through two, four. Air three, and air four. Okay. This is will be text. Air pump one. Eight pixels. Control is air one. And we're just going to copy and paste the coloring. And again, a lot of this is copy paste. We'll go back through and clean a lot of this up. This, is, this will be an interesting web of imports when we're done, but it will be much cleaner and much easier to add stuff on later. Um, so air pump one. Control, we also need to do toggle true, and that should be good. Um, should be able to copy and paste this. Pump two. And this one we're going to want to do x equals 10. Wouldn't you want to move it on the y axis? Yes, you are quite correct. <laughs> y is 10, Y is 20, 3, 3, and... Oh, no, there's As someone okay. who, who's a whole lot of nothing and actually trying to write some GUI stuff. <laughs> In that, I've been... Mean, okay. I'm going to do a GUI sprite in there, but he did do absolutely nothing. Alright, I'm just going to comment. Well, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. So I'm going to re refactor. I'm going to rewrite it before I start adding in the air pump menu. 
or are these air pumps or these are air tanks? That's air tanks. Okay. Okay. So now we've changed pump to tank. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that should be good. Um, okay, so that's how that's set up. I think this is good. I'm just taking a quick look through. That all looks good. Submenus. Good positioning. Air tank menu. Only shows up if this is turned on. Air tank one. Teleport control. Oh, color is indented incorrectly. That would yell at me. There we go. Hopefully that works. And if not, I get to reload, relaunch Minecraft. Oh, I should be looking at Discord to see if Nathan is typing, because he usually can't talk. He's oh, not not. It's not nowhere I can see. Unless they've been typing in the okay. Patreon chat. No, they've not been typing in the Patreon chat. So the only place I spent with you. Nathan is typing in the Patreon chat. Oh, is he in the Patreon chat? <laughs> <laughs> it just said that they're not going to be here. Then. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. so Nathan forgets one. that there's no microphone. So I'll have to move that a little bit. But there we go. Those should now work. So. I. Where okay? Who can tell me where in the locomotive these are supposed to show up? <laughs> uh, they'll be on the running board on the side, uh, just yeah. above the wheels. Assuming Nathan hasn't omitted them. <laughs> yep. Oh, there we go. I'm standing right on it. Okay, so here's air tank one. Uh, air tank, tank two, two should be the other side. Ah. Oh. You have one and two. Oh, and three and four. Oh, I see how we did it. That's cool. Look at that. <laughs> Though, did I? Yeah, Air 4. Uh, four? Yeah. Oh, I see. Air it's 4 there. is underneath Air 1. It, okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to move that over a little bit, so we're going to move that over another... I don't that know, should be steam them. 30... Yeah, there's 220 pixels. And... Move, move. Done. <laughs> Maybe I should just do a, a basic text GUI for lamps. <laughs> it's a good place to start, get it all figured out, and then it's pretty easy to go back through and add some uh, more image elements to the background of it. That was probably a little too far, but it doesn't actually matter. So you might actually solve menu, the issue it. with it uh, getting jammed as well. Okay, in that case, can't, mind if I open up one of your models oh. just to get the, 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 item, the control groups for the lamps? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I just want your permission. <laughs> okay, so uh, I made one mistake. I put this at the wrong level. So this, I need to have this also respect this menu stuff. Okay. There we go. So it only shows the submenus if this, if this thing is turned on. Because right now I can do that and turn that on and off. Okay, so the next question is how can we make this simpler? Because there are probably close to a hundred options in here. Maybe not quite that bad, but there's like 50. Um, so if we copy and paste this every single time, this is going to be a lot of stuff. So let's start figuring out how we're going to clean this up and do it a little bit nicer. So the first thing well, there's, there's a couple different things I want to do here. Um, let's see. Not, so I'm, I'm planning on going until about 8 p.m., so that's another 40 minutes at most. So I guess we'll do the simplest thing first, which is this color control. Because we've copied and pasted, like, I tend to look for what if I copied and pasted the most times? So that's what we're going to do first, is we're going to create a... Uh, default color block color.camel uh, Nathan has just asked um, the logic said that you two spoke about logic stuff and said that and it's apparently not very possible 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of mentioned that earlier on the stream. Like, I'm not planning on adding logic to control groups for quite some time. Okay. I don't think. Um, it adds a level of complexity that I'm not prepared for. Um, and Nathan says there's 46 control groups. We're not doing all of those in the stream tonight. That would take too long. <laughs> but we're going to go from the current setup, which works, and it's pretty easy to figure out just on the top level to a much more compact version. So this little snippet of color, we can now inject anywhere in this file that we want. So instead of doing this, we can now do import, and I'm going to copy-paste because I'm going to get it wrong. Sturdy. Though bucket is fairly easy to type. I say that now and I've probably misspelled it at least once. Import. Camel. So this will replace the need for this block here. So we're going to paste that here. Make sure the indentation is correct. If you're doing this in Camel, indentation is actually quite important. It is probably it is uh, the biggest dislike I have for Camel. I dislike ind indentation based things. <laughs> yep. Which is why I still support JSON. So you can also take any camel and paste it into the online tool that I've pinned um, and it'll give you the corresponding JSON. Personally, I prefer camel for this sort of stuff, but that's why there's options. Well, I'm more familiar with JSON, so I'll probably be sticking with it. Yep. So. Okay. So, yeah, if you, do, if you start getting into pretty crazy GUIs, I would recommend trying to learn camel. But again, my recommendation, I'm never planning on like deprecating one or the other. They effectively have the same features, so if you can do something in one, you can do it in the other, in most cases. Um, okay, so that's cleaner. So now if we want to change any of the colors, we just have one spot to change. Pretty cool. Um, the next thing I'm seeing is these sub these menus, or rather these, these menu blocks, I'm going to be copying and pasting that a lot. Because there's how many of those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those. Ten of those and forty-six so. total widgets, which will. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to create a new file and call that menu.camel, and here we're going to use some find and replace stuff. So the question is, how do we want to do this? I'm going to... Yeah, I think I'll do it that way because it's a little bit cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now, now, again, now we have to do our replacement. So this is... I'm just going to call this setting. Toggle. This is going to be... Oops. Call this text. Or... Yeah, just call that text. So there we go. So now, oh, and I also want to do, because they also need a Y offset. So we'll also do Y equals offset. Actually, we can do, we can actually do something really interesting here. Because it's effectively just doing a find and replace. So we can do uh, ID zero. And that will make sense in a minute. So what I want to do is every one of these, I want to be moved down 10 pixels from the last. So what I can do, this is a little bit of a hack, and I think it's kind of smart, um, is now we can do import, this is going to be source is, copy that, paste that, menu.camel, place equals, and now this is where some fun happens. So if we do id equals zero, that's just going to be y equals zero, zero. But if we set that to 1, id equals 10. Set that to 2, id equals 20. So on and so forth. Do you kind of see how that mm -hmm. that works? It's uh, it's yeah. interesting. Setting equals bucket or tank menu. Technically, the quotes aren't needed for most of this stuff. It just is easier for my eye to pick up on stuff. And uh, text. Actually, I'm going to change uh. text to label. And that's going to be air 
tanks. No. Nope. Oh, we lost Nathan. We lost Nathan. Okay. Cool. So, this does take about, up about the same amount of screen real estate, but this means that anytime you want to ch tweak the menu, you tweak it in one spot. Um, do this here. Now this is going to be ID is 1, so that'll move it 10 pixels down. Air pumps. Air pump menu. We can get rid of this. Let's add a few more of these. So, tanks, pumps, injector pipes. I just want to check. Camel won't break because I'm using tap indentation, right? It will not. Nope. Okay, go. <laughs> you can even I... mix tabs and spaces as long as you keep it consistent. <laughs> okay. I should just go on to the. I should just go on to the actual much belt and get get up the thing and just read that. Read it there. It'll be fast. It'll be smart. So I'm not oh. going to sit here and add all of them, but I'll add. Uh... Let's just do steps and grabs, and I'll stop there. So all those should work. So let's stop here and see if we reload this, how is that going to look? Resource packs. Da -dum -bum, done. And watch the log. This is just the development launcher I use for those of you who are curious. Um, right, now to, now to actually find the GUI stuff again, I might lose it. Go me. Okay. So, good news, bad news. <laughs> That's <laughs> not necessarily... Uh, <laughs> didn't leave enough text room here for these, but that's okay. Um, what I could do, potentially, and this is a, this is actually a perfect example, is let's say I change the text height here to 6. The spacing will be a little bit weird, but I can then do options, resource packs, and move, done. Hey, look at that. They mostly fit now. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> so we have our air tanks. So now we need to do... Now we need to clean this up, because we did a lot of copy-paste to make these air tanks. Um, so let's... Now we want to do the sub-menus. Um, customize menu, that's all fine. So these... So this menu is fine. This part right here is what needs to get cleaned up, because some of these are going to have a ton of options. Um, so let's create a submenu file. And again, you don't have to use imports for any of this. You can copy and paste to your heart's content. This is just my preferred way of working. Camel. Okay. And now we can pull this out. going to be label. And we also have our y offset, y equals id 0, which will offset it by 10 pixels each time. Here, take 1. Right, so what else do we need to do? Control. Remember, not the yeah, yeah, so spell clear in American, not English, not that. Uh, Proper English. <laughs> Copy this part. This is sub menu.
Okay. That should do that one. And again, this doesn't save space, but this just means that if you ever want to change something like the text size for something like this, or change some of the offsets, you just do it in one, sp one place. Tank 2, tank 2. And this is, at least for me, visually easier to, to see, and we're going to do 3 and 4. Tank 3, 3, 4, and 4, and what I need to do is update that. Offsets, one, two, three, and that should work. Just double checking. Okay, cool. And wait for it to reload. And there we go. Oh, that's interesting. For some reason, the hash mark is... Oh, there's a bug in camel. That's fun. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that regex is broken. Okay. There's So, for those of you watching after the fact, this is a bug that will be fixed, but if there's a hash mark... Oh, you know what? Because this... Right. Um... Okay, so it break, it breaks set. things on hash mark. It detects hash marks. <laughs> actually, oh, yeah. so this is actually this isn't a camel bug. This is a like it. So any hash marks like that need to be quoted, and because it's effectively just copy and pasting this into here, it's missing the quotation mark. So this should really have a quote around it as well. So if there's anything weird where you've like got like a hash mark and it's not coming through, okay, make sure it's quoted. That would not be a problem in uh, in JSON, but JSON can't have comments. I mean, it sort of can, but not really. It's weird. Okay, back to full functionality. I'm also going to change those to uh, size 6 as well, because I just like that a little better. Alright, so let's add a few more, and then I think we'll be done with this part for the evening. Um, unless you guys actually want to see me put in like a little bit of a backing element. Mm. So this is going to be the air pump menu. And what are these called? These are pump 1, 2, and 3. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Pump. Then replace air with okay, and that should work. Oh, but I also need to put in the uh, this piece because we want to tell it in what scenarios it should be translucent. And add. All right, let's mm -hmm. see if that works. Oops. So hopefully, what you're seeing is once you get the basics down, starting to build these out and formatting these GUIs is fairly straightforward. It can be tedious, especially if there's 50 widgets, but it's better than having 50 individual little things on the model that you have to click. Okay, so we can turn on some of our air tanks, turn that off, and hey, there's air pumps, look at that. There's one up there, and I don't know where three is, but it should be around here somewhere, maybe it's, oh yeah, it's on this side. Okay, so two and three are there. Cool. So that works. And if you wanted, you could actually create like little icons for each one of these, like like have an air pump icon or an air tank icon, or like however you want to do this. Again, I'm a developer. I make really terrible UIs. That's my modus operandi um, method of operation. Um, 
modus operandi method of operation? I don't actually know. Anyways, um, let's do one more and yes. then go to questions. Um, also, that UI needs to be adjusted, because that's a very small tank. Um, and I know tank engine support needs to come at some point. Okay, air pump menu, injector pipes, fun. Let's take a look at the blender model. Injector pipes, pipe one, pipe two, okay. So, I'm just going to copy and paste this one. That should work. This is going to be instead of air tank, check your pipes menu and change the comment. Okay. And I'm sure each one of these has their own distinct style and name that should be put in them. I'm just using that, like the number one, two, three, and four for now. Uh, so we should be able to reload options, video settings. Just packs. Got that. Reload. And hopefully that'll work. So while I'm finishing this up, think of what questions you have for me or other examples you want to see before I wrap up the stream for for the night. Right, I think that right now I just need to package this into a geo into a main GUI. Right? That one in the cab. Sorry, got distracted. That's a pipe that's interesting. That should not um. That <laughs> Where's that going? See if I stand right here. Nope. Right through the chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save this somewhere. Um... Ooh, that's another injector pipe. Look at all this fun. Look at all these fun pipes we can turn on and off. <laughs> I'm sure there's proper names for each one of these. Um, yeah. Again, because there isn't logic between these, you can have two of these menus open at the same time, and they will overlap, which isn't great. But it is what it is for now. I'm back. Okay. So, given what I've showed tonight so far, what do you guys... Uh, a, are there any questions? And w are there any other examples you want to see with the 20 minutes or so we have remaining? Not from me. No, not from me either. Okay. Dragon? I was just thinking. No, I've, all I've been thinking is just the different ways I could do these GUIs. Because a, one of the big things on British diesels, a huge amount of our diesels have headboard and head code boxes, mm -hmm. which essentially would, if I were to do those via a widget in game, would require twenty seven plus nine plus I ten did the buttons. Math because I worked it You'd have thirty seven buttons per but option because each one could be a number or letter. Uh, I I Tetsu only sec only second one could be a letter, which reduces the number significantly. Not by much. Um, it's still a lot of... It would be a lot. Doing it via GUI, in theory, you could have just an indicator button with whatever letters plus a standard key code, which would be a massive advantage, which would be massively helpful. It, it's about... It, it, it makes it less than half, because it goes from 144 to 66. Okay. So thinking about this, how I would do this... So, like, I'm assuming in the model you'd have a... So, so so your use case is for your nameplate, you have... Or, like, you've got an identification plate. You would, in the model, have for each individual slot, like, for A-L-I-C-E, each would have its own set of letters and numbers for that slot with control groups for each. Uh, in the patron chat is the example. It's the top box. 
Yes. They were head code boxes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's let's let's so we won't actually do a model with that, but we'll yeah on, add onto this GUI, build something like that because that's a good slightly more complex, slightly more tricky example where you could do it with a lot of copy paste, but that would be a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, and doing it via in-game button widgets is quite quite frankly impossible. <laughs> Theoretically, but I actually don't think it's that bad potentially. Um, potentially, again, this is this is all theor theoretical at this point. Um, I'm just thinking for a moment before I do this. I'm just gonna pull this up just to show the people at home while I'm thinking. So something like the D5135 you'd want to replace. No, the very top in the middle above the oh, middle window. Oh, the IL-23. Yes, okay. their head codes, yeah. they would change all over the place. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You could also do the one, two, do one, three, five, but that would be changing the, the locomotive's number. <laughs> that, yeah, which, yeah. considering nameplates, would require a lot of different awkwardness. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of curious how awkward Therapy this is going to be. So... <laughs> Let's, These are, I let's think use the, the existing... first one can only be a number, second one can be a letter, third and fourth can only be numbers. That was what okay. Ted told me, so... Yeah, because that's standard British form number head code. Four digit. So... Yeah, we'll just do this as if it was part of this model. Four... Yeah, I, th I think this won't be too bad. I could be wrong. I could be very, very wrong. <laughs> okay. Add a little bit more space here. And each of these could live in their own file, so you could have a injector pipes file and a air pumps file. Like, hopefully you're getting the pattern with, like, for both formatting and repetition, you can use imports to solve both of those. Um, so what did I call it? I called that head code. So there's going to be two, this is going to be even more nesting in the menus, but I think I don't think it's going to be too bad. Um, just thinking for a moment. All right. So this is going to be first, second, third, and fourth. Yeah, I think I can just potentially do this. I, that is my temp. That is my first. That is my first actual written up, hopefully functional, functional GUI element <laughs> section. Nice. Let's take a look. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking in the Patreon chat. I don't have uh, Discord up on the live screen. That's fine. Left middle. I need to actually, te I need to actually test yeah, the It's a bit good. late for me right now. <laughs> Yeah, that looks looks like so far so good. Yeah. <laughs> First part okay, should toggle so... on if it's visible. So we're gonna import indent this, we're gonna use the menu thing here. This will be also be a setting. This will be bucket first letter. First slot. There's going to be some trickery, I think, to get this to work well, but I think this is going to be pretty cool. One, two, three. First, second. It's going to take me a minute. Third. Okay, so now we should have that submenu. But those are going to be done. So this is using settings instead of controls, which would mean that's a global thing. 
And that's nested there. And then... Theoretically, we could just do an element here. And I'm only going to do it for the first one. And then I'm going to make it a little bit more uh, flexible. Yeah. True setting equals bucket first slot. Actually, those now we can actually just use these imports because that's right now we need these imports. Copy that. And you can do a much better laid out user interface. I'm just going to go vertical because that's what I've got going on. Layout is something that people smarter than me can do. Zero. Uh, let's say this is control group uh, head code first. Zero. Just as an example. I'm going to paste this a bunch of times because it's going to be so much fun. Go back through and replace. It would be nice to add, like, an, like turn this into an actual programming language-ish with, like, control, with, like, if statements and loops and all sorts of fun stuff, but that's a whole other level of yeah. complexity. Because that would make that would make you unable to do things like, oh, there's more, more things in the same place that I can just prevent that. Right, next yeah. step is I'm going to attempt to pull in place a flip. I'm going to attempt to modify a GUI slightly. I'm going to attempt to flip the water gauge to the right. Hmm. There should be some code in there that already does that. Like, like th there should already be an example in there, but I didn't actually test it. There is a water glass right. Is there a water glass right camel? Oh. Gauge water right camel, yeah. Okay. So now we have all of this stuff. Which is fun. So we have z we should have 0 through 9 in here. So let's reload this and make sure this works. For, but this is only for bucket th for the first bucket slot. Um, which means that there's this won't work for a second or third. But we'll fix that in a minute. Options, resource packs, add remove. Let's make sure that doesn't break. Flip that next. And so this hopefully will be a good example of how powerful the replacement system can actually be. And next I want to flip the... Might get a little nice. jump right here. Easy. Okay, there we go. Okay, customize, head code, first slot. I did not move it over. <laughs> Oops. I'll fix that in just a moment. So that, that now it. works. So I'll move this over, I don't know, 50 pixels. But this only works for the first one. We want to use this for all the rest of them as well. And we've got this huge block of text we want to use. So we're going to use the import replace system. File, Merrick dot, or just do slot dot camel. And I'm going to copy. I'll just, I'm going to grab this entire thing. Put it in here. Indent. Five. That should be good. And now we're going to replace first with slot name. Actually, I'll just replace it with slot. So now this is going to be head code slot seven. 
and so on and so forth. So all of the controls, as this file is pulled in, the slot will be replaced with that particular iteration, um, which should work. Um, so all of this can get deleted now. And now we should be able to do... Uh, or actually, I need to see what indentation level that was at. Alright, so this is... Import. Copy this. Paste this. Camel. This is this is where the power of the replacement really comes in handy. So slot equals first and paste and paste and paste. Second, third, fourth. And hello, Kit Henry. What are you? Are you yelling at Greebles? Okay. I right, make it at this level. I import. And hopefully that should work. thinking. Oh, I forgot to indent it. Oops. So they're still going to show up in the wrong spot. But, oh no, no, I did fix that. So here's first slot, second slot, third slot, fourth slot. Oh, settings are set. So this one should only have one turned on. But now we have... Do you see how that works? So Dragon, what are your thoughts on this system? That would work perfectly for the head code system. Yeah. You'd be able you to like whatever. And, and you could do like a better keyboard, so to speak, in there. Um, yeah. but, but that's just worth sending over because that literally just and then going as just like I'm going to actually recommend that could be a default. That might be worthwhile a default element or just annoying. Uh, could you imagine if we call that go? By the way, Cam's made head code GUI. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have a clue what anybody other than the UK uses for head codes, so... Uh, I believe the US uses a similar system for its train boards. Which is, I believe, all letter... Everything's a letter and number. And it's like five digits, so... So, something interesting worth noting is settings persist regardless of what piece of stock you're in. So, these numbers are controls like control groups like you're familiar with. Everything else here is a setting. So if I leave this locomotive and go into this locomotive, you can see the control groups aren't set, but the settings persist in their values. So if I turn these off and just leave customize open, come back over here, and this looks the same. But right. it's okay. the control groups that okay. are individual. So settings are, gl are global to the game, and actually, it's global to, like, your local install of immersive railroading. Um, the controls are per locomotive, per instance. So, like, here, there's no air tanks turned on. Okay. Whereas if I come over to here, they are. Okay. And so all this really needs is some formatting, making, like, a nice, like, formatted background panel for this stuff. And then I think you're good. You can also do, like... And I don't know that I have the time for this tonight, but you could do a, uh, um, like a header, a center block that gets scaled, and then a footer, potentially. Or, like, repeated. Like, you, actually, actually, the way you probably do is have, like, a header, and then each one of these has, like, a little... Let me take a screenshot so I can... I think you have, uh, so you can have a top and bottom that are just moved up and down, and then the middle part is actually stretched or duplicated to prevent warping of... Any pattern. All right. Where should I put this? Though I think there's, I think the way you'd want to do it is like put it as a background on, uh, yes, yeah, so like make a background for each of these entries, which would then match up with the header and the footer. Right. Is that? Yeah. Okay. But that somewhat yeah, makes sense. This... Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll it'll take a little bit of playing around with, and I always have to look back at existing references as I get started, but once I get into it, like, it's fairly straightforward to, like, take simple concepts and build on top of them, and I didn't have to copy and paste this 20 times. 
and you could have like two of these pieces, one of which is alpha and one is numeric, and have one like import a different one for like the different slots. Like if one can be just numbers and one can be numbers and letters, so on and so forth. So. Right. I think I've set everything up in the. I put the front. I front end. I put the lamp GUI into the into the into an into the overarching into an overarching modified version of the toggle thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still use lamp GUI with the classic L with the classic with the classic control set. Mm -hmm. I think that's good for handling things. Uh, right. I know a lot of people still use the classic style, so it, it's worth having at least the uh, uh, the lamps work. Yeah, and then yeah because that customizes goes across the Then I just need co make a copy of that to make uh, to add another element that imports the rear the natural rear lamp version. I like Save. the excitement in your voice, Aki. <laughs> That's that's a good. Oh sign no! This is I... this is like that. You should be sleeping. This is like this is like that means he's got work tomorrow, and I really should be asleep right now. Yeah, because it but... is uh, three minutes before one a.m. for us. Oh. And I well, thanks I for hanging work... out. It's tomorrow, All right? <laughs> tomorrow right. after work, so... I will package these up for you, Kai, and send them over. Bro. I just want to. I've labeled. I am. Li I'm going to be. I, I'm going to prob. I'm. I'm referring to the the converted GUI as DRG GUI, but the, everything's under the Aki section. Right. Because, I, because I'm making the because I'm making these things at myself in order to mark them as my made as made by me. <laughs> I'll take a look. Hey, Actually, I will uh, Cam? Will we get access? Obviously, will you be able to send over the uh, modified acts that you've done it? Well, at least yeah, it, the I, camel. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take the all the camel files I've written and uh, post them in the patron chat. And when I eventually upload this as a YouTube video, I'll put the links there as well. Uh, okay. Like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these given the developer art, but <laughs> uh, it tells us. Yeah, it, like, it shows it's, it's us a good where. Starting point. Yeah, it shows us how to lay things out, which is a lot easier than having to vaguely recall from memory. <laughs> And hey, you've got the recording, so if you've got two hours, you can sit down and watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> or skip around to like, oh yeah, Kim was showing this on screen, and this is what he was doing. Yeah, I just have to uh, deal with ignoring my own voice, because I think I might die if I have to put up hearing my own voice. Just chalk it up to transatlantic networks. It's not that bad, it sounds fine. As you should know yourself, when you hear your own voice back to you, it sounds weird. <laughs> hmm. I'm I'm actually really glad you asked about the head codes. Like showing off, like the, like kind of rewriting these files using the replacement is super powerful. Yes, because uh, I've got a fictional uh, DMU that will probably be incorporating that system, and it will be useful. It will be fun to make it work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've got an actual real DMU that will eventually happen at some point. The model's been on hold for about five months. Alright, well, I think that's going to be it for me tonight. Are there any pressing questions before I sign off? Uh, no. no I got it. Cool. Alright. Well, if you guys do yeah. another round of GUI stuff, uh, let me know and I can do another one of these streams, but hopefully this at least gets people people moving. Um, and, yep, uh, yeah, thanks for I'm coming and hanging yeah. out for two hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's officially 1am for the UK. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I've just made. I've hopefully. I need to actually test these before I send them over to you, Kai. Which means I'm not just doing it now. <laughs> I would probably say do it tomorrow because it is one a.m. Yeah. But I'm not yes. going to do that. But thank you very I much for the time. Good night, everybody. Yeah, happy to help.